view of some of the components. Um, square D pressure switch, magnetic motor starter in that can, and then the drain solenoid is right next to a manual solenoid that I have them teed off. Uh, this one here just keeps you honest, you know. Once in a while you just go there and give that one a bleed, which I, you can see I haven't done in a while, so the water builds up right here. But then we bleed water out through the solenoid and down through this pipe. And, and this one, this is a real noisemaker when it went off. So I put this, uh, it's not even a pipe, it's uh, irrigation tubing, that heavy plastic irrigation tubing. And I've just got it buried um, over to a planter. I don't even know that I can find the, uh, there's the hose down in there, you can see it running across. I don't even know that I can find the end of it. I've got it in there somewhere. Well, there it keeps going. This is like hunting for Easter eggs. There it is. Alright, uh, that's a homemade muffler. Uh, that's just a piece of, uh, plastic pipe. And this is packed with uh, sound deadening, and uh, so there's a there's a fitting, and it's packed with a sound deadening compound in there. And inside of here is a plastic sprinkler body with the holes drilled in it. So that's a rust-proof muffler. That's where my that's where my uh, condensation drains out into a planter. So uh, that keeps the drain working good, and it keeps it far enough away. You definitely want to make it run downhill. But uh, solenoid on the uh, on the tank, and it uh, it'll bleed off once every cycle. So let's go over the nuts and bolts of a uh, <clears throat> uh, an air compressor system. First thing we're going to do is we're going to draw. You know my colors here. Uh, we're going to draw one with a magnetic motor starter. So we're we're going to bring. Uh, this could be however many phases you like. I'm just going to draw a single phase coming in uh, with contacts here of a motor starter. And then we're going to come out to a motor. And uh, this uh, starter is going to have a coil. Uh, and we're just going to call this the, uh, I guess this is going to be the M1 motor. And this is going to be the M1 coil. The next step we're going to come in, uh, we need to power up the coil. And we're going to do that. We're going to have a neutral line coming through on the top. And then we're going to have a, a, the hot line coming through with a control switch. This is just going to be a switch mounted to your wall or what have you uh, for you to control the operation of the compressor. When you flip this switch, you get compressor. Um, out of there, we're going to go to a um, pressure switch. See if I remember all my electrical symbols. Uh, that's a pressure switch uh, that closes on rise. Uh, from there, you're going to go through the uh, overloads of this motor starter. Those are going to be normally closed. And then we're going to go to our coil. Uh, and this is going to be connected here. Now, if you wanted... Um, uh, the, way the way Chuck has his wired with a solenoid... When he engages this compressor and enables the compressor, you would want the uh, coil for the, we're going to call his solenoid one, solenoid one uh, would be his main tank compressor. That's the one that fills up the shop or creates a link between the tank and the shop uh, house lines. So when this switch closes, this solenoid gets, uh, um, gets opened. But also, if his pressure switch is closed, or the pressure in the tank is low, he's going to send the current onto the magnetic motor starter, engaging this motor starter, closing these contacts, and now we have a motor running. Now, the next thing is time delay. And uh, we're going to call this a TDR. And uh, this is just going to be a time delay relay with a normally closed circuit. And then that's going to go out to our solenoid 2. Solenoid 2. So now solenoid 2 is going to be our drain solenoid. So uh, every time the compressor cycles, when this switch is closed, 
This solenoid is open, allowing air to pass from the tank to the shop house lines. Uh, this pressure switch uh, is dependent on tank pressure. If the tank pressure is low enough, this switch closes, M1 coil energizes, motor runs. But as soon as this uh, M1 coil is energized, TDR is powered up. Now, time delay relay, it's going to start a timer. This thing's going to stay closed until the timer runs out. And then that switch is going to open. So this uh, drain solenoid is going to only run for one, two seconds. So it's going to give you a quick burst uh, every time the uh, every time the compressor cycles. You'll you'll get a very small amount of drainage on the uh, on the tank. So that's the way it works with a motor starter. <clears throat> Oh wow, my ink kind of bled through there. Let's try a let's try a fresh one. Now the other type is going to be it's uh, on the cheaper model compressors. Um, they're going to use a two pole uh, pressure switch. So this uh, this switch has two poles, uh, but it's also pressure operated. So it's got you've got your pressure indicator here. And that's going to close up these two poles uh, from pressure. Now, and that goes, gosh, straight to the motor. Now, these are thermally protected motors. These type use a thermally protected motor. Means they're going to have the red button on the side, push to reset, so the motor can't cook itself. So it's got its own thermal protection. So you really don't need any external protection. So you can use a pressure switch like this to, uh, to do that. Now, now how would you uh, do that? You know, how would you run a drain valve with that? This one, we're, you know, we're running a full 240 out here, but now down here we're running 110. So it's got a 240 uh, power voltage, but then we've got 110 volt control voltage. And this one, this one, we're just going to call this one all 220. So off of here, you would, uh, you're going to come down and break off of here and break off of here, and your, uh, your TDR. It's still going to go in line, and that's still going to be a normally closed. You have to get one that you have to get your TDR has to be rated for 240 volt, and your drain solenoid, which is a solenoid, uh, we call it, I'm still solenoid two. Uh, solenoid two also has to be rated 240 volt. So you would need to get both high voltage. So you're running full line voltage for everything on this. Um, this is not like a motor starter application, and this is how a lot of OEMs do it, is with a uh, kind of a manual pressure switch uh, that opens and closes two separate poles and turns the motor off and on directly. It doesn't go through a motor starter. But your time delay relay, you, it can be had in this voltage. Um, this unit here, this is 110, and these solenoids are 110. So those are all uh, low volt solenoids there all right but that's the difference between uh the type that has the uh switch directly on or a control switch directly on a pressure on the pressure vessel on the pressure switch and then separate controls here to turn it off and on all right so you've seen the two different types uh, this one like i say is, is a high voltage unit now they are available in high volt this is a goyan this is a this is a little different brand uh than a red hat and these things are, uh, I think they're manufactured in Australia. Every time I call over to Goyen, I get, I get an Aussie. So uh, I'm thinking they're made in Australia. But uh, yeah, this is a 240 volt unit. Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, it's 240 volt on this one. And half inch in, half inch out. They're directional, so you got to go through it a specific way. Conduit hub here, they wire inside. Uh, not legal for outdoors. Don't use this outdoors. This will leak and cause a short. It's an open coil inside of that plastic enclosure. But uh, very inexpensive little uh, solenoid. All right, let's go talk about time delay relays. Okay, so let's talk about the reasons why you want to put an auto drain on your compressor and why you don't just go out and buy one of those that just screws in uh, directly to the tank and uh, has your delay, your on time and your off time, and it just plugs into the wall. Uh, the reason we don't do that, and the reason I hate those, is because they are on 24-7, and even though you're not using your compressor, 
you'll be walking by it and it'll go and scare the snot out of you. And they'll be doing that in the middle of the night and you'll always forget to turn them off. And those little uh, automatic ones are just kind of a pain. Uh, they do work well and uh, there's nothing wrong with that, but uh, uh, they're just not for me. Uh, the way I do it, and I hook it up to the, uh, every time the compressor cycles, the harder I use my compressor, the more my tank drains. The less I use my compressor, the less I, my tank drains. If I don't use my compressor at all, my tank doesn't drain. So it's, it's just a natural, it's perfect. And uh, my uh, tank stays nice and dry. That's the reason I don't buy the store-bought ones and run uh, those on my, uh, for my personal use. Now the timer that I'm gonna recommend, uh, it's by Automatic Timer Controls, ATC. It's a 175 SO110. Uh, it's got a universal coil. It's a 110 volt to 240 volt coil within the within the relay, or that's what makes the timer operate. Is uh, I'm not going to call it a coil, but that's what makes the timer operate. It'll operate anywhere between 110 and 240 volt. Um, it is adjustable from 0.01 seconds up to three hours. So you can drain your tank for three hours if you wanted to. Not that you'd want to. Uh, I give mine about a second and a half burst every time it cycles. Um, What's key about this is it's got single pole, double throw contacts. That means it's got a common terminal, normally open side and a normally closed side. It flops back and forth, but it's single throw. And you're actually using the uh, normally closed side, which is kind of unusual for a, uh, this is a delay on timer. Or also known as a uh, on delay. On delay! Okay, so uh, the amps, the, uh, Contacts are good for three amps, so that's going to run your solenoid just fine. It costs about thirty-five bucks, uh, that, and then you still need a solenoid on top of that. Um, but the, the store-bought ones that plug onto tanks for the auto drains, I think they're about eighty or ninety dollars. So you're, you know, you're right in the ballpark. By the time you buy a solenoid and uh, get it piped in and all that, uh, and then get this this timer, so you're right in the ballpark uh, dollar-wise. And these are very small units. You can look them up online. Uh, Galco has them. Uh, look up G-A-L-C-O. There's a supply house for uh, uh, industrial controls and different types of automation. But this will get you an automatic tank drain. And you want to make sure that your solenoid that you use is a normally closed solenoid. Don't get it normally open and try to work it backwards. That's not going to work. You'd have to energize it all the time to keep it closed and solenoids won't, won't like that. So make sure you've got a normally closed solenoid on your tank and then your choice of voltage if you're doing 240 volt full voltage uh, this same timer will work doesn't matter which you know which which way you're going whether you're going with a motor starter or you're going with a uh, um, the type with the pressure switch that controls the motor directly so uh, hope you found that informative this is mainly for uh, Chuck over at Outside Screwball he was uh, he and I were texting back and forth last night about his new uh, solenoid he put on his um, uh, compressor to, to air up the shop quickly. Just flip a switch and it airs up the shop. And uh, this is an extension to that, how to make your tank drain automatically. And after you go to automatic drains and get away from the manual drains, because let's face it, manual drains, we hate getting down on our hands and knees and opening that thing up and getting all that gooey crap out of the tank and you get sprayed with water and oil and everything else. Uh, it's not convenient, so no one does it. So thus your tank gets full of water and then you plug into an air hose and uh, you think by mistake maybe you plugged into a water hose. And uh, it's no good for spraying, it's no good for sandblasting, air tools don't like it, there's lots of stuff that don't like it. It's no fun when you're blowing off parts that are just came out of the parts washer and they're all nice and clean and then you blow a bunch of yogurt all over them. So, uh, yeah, keep that tank drain. You'd be surprised how clean your airlines will stay, especially in humid weather, for those of you in humid climates. All right, guys, that's the end of this uh, little bit of video on uh, automating your compressor and making it a little more uh, maintenance-free. All right, thanks for watching.